Hey guys, welcome to my presentation. Today I'm going to talk about our flavor of microservice-based system integration here at Imakina CEE. I'm Georg Pfeffer, I'm 34 years old, and I'm working now for eight years at Imakina CEE. I started right after my studies of business informatics at TU Vienna. For the last three years, I'm working as a CRM developer, mainly with Microsoft TM, CRM. And what we do a lot here is integrating data from other systems. Um, generally, I'm a huge fan of Microsoft technologies, especially .NET. I think they are going in a really good direction in the last couple of years. Um, I like to make things as simple as possible. I think our industry is already complicated enough. Okay, so let's start with a classic scenario a lot, lot of companies face at one point. Um, you have your typical IT landscape. There are lots of different systems which, which all have a specific purpose. You have your web shops, you have your CMSs, which manage your content. You have your ERP systems, which handle your business processes. You have your CRMs, which manage your client relations, but they all have one thing in common. They do a poor job on their own. So a web shop, for example, needs to know the product stock from the ERP system, or the ERP system needs the orders from the web shop so they can actually be processed and shipped. The CRM is pretty much useless without all of the customer data. The same is true for a marketing automation tool. The bottom line is, the better these systems are interconnected, the better they perform. And usually also, the faster they get the data, the better they perform. So we don't want to interchange all the data once a night from midnight to 4 a.m. That's just not good enough. So what do we want? We want a fast performant integration solution. So ideally, it's event-based triggered. It should be simple, extendable, future-proof, and scalable. So serverless and microservices would be a good approach here. Um, but what we really want is we want a single solution for all integrations. We don't want a specific solution for the orders from the web shop to the ERP system or from or to the CRM. That way, we would end up with a spaghetti integration architecture, which would be really hard to maintain. So basically, we want all integrations to facilitate the same data format, the common data format, and use the same architecture. For the architecture, we go for a serverless microservice approach. So what does that actually mean? Let me present our implementation for that. A microservice-based system integration. This is not an enterprise service bus. We use dumb pipes and smart endpoints as opposed to the smart pipes of the enterprise service bus. What does that mean? We have publishers and subscriber microservices, which are responsible to getting data out of the systems into the message bus or getting data out of the message bus into the target systems. The only thing which the message bus does here is routing. We can implement all of this serverless with, with Azure Functions and Azure Service Bus. <coughs> so first of all, we have to create a new common data language, the common data format, which is universal throughout our whole system landscape. Um, it contains mappings from and to all the proprietary um, data formats of our, of our subsystems. For example, for account, you could have first name and last name, and in a subsystem, the technical name for it could be name one and name two. You have these mappings in there. This is the core of our implementation. Only messages in, the, in this language will enter the data bus. So it's really important, you sh we should, and it should be versioned 
preferably in Git. <clears throat> so for the messaging, um, our messages can contain multiple objects, but they should only contain relational objects. So that means if you send a contact, you should also send the related account. Or if you send an order, you should send the order items and its connected accounts. But you should, but we do not send multiple contacts in one message. We rather send multiple messages. It's then the responsibility of the target systems to integrate the data, update the records, do everything in one operation and handle all the references. Of course, it's important to that each object gets a global ID, which is universal through our whole system landscape. Then we have the source for each object to track its origin. And of course, we have a last modified timestamp to solve all the concurrency issues. Um, for the concurrency issues, we could hold a separate presentation about the whole different strategies on how to solve this, but for now, we just assume the most recent timestamp always wins. So for API Gateway, we're using, we're using Azure API Management. The API gate Gateway is the gatekeeper into the message bus. There's no way a message enters the message bus without going through the API gateway. The API gateway, it enforces the common data format and it ensures that the message is well formatted. That means the burden of verification is on a single component. So subscribers can always assume that their messages are well formatted. Our message bus is the Azure service bus. It's important that there is no hidden logic. It, choose, it should just route the messages. It follows a publish subscribe pattern. That means uh, messages get published to so-called topics and various systems can subscribe to them and, and process them. Here, it makes sense to, um, to split topic up, topics up in entity types. So you could have topics for accounts, for orders, or for stock updates. So now we go to our microservices. They are implemented serverless as Azure Functions. We differentiate between two types of, of microservices. We have publishers, which are responsible for getting data out of the system in, into the message bus. Typically, Typically, we prefer an event-based approach because it's just simply faster. But if there is really no other option available, we could also go with a, with a ball-based approach. But here, we have to make sure that we're using small intervals. It's just, it's just not good enough if you just pull the data once every night. Either way, the publisher processes the message. It it gets from it gets from the system, it puts it into the common data format and sends it to the message bus via the API gateway. Subscribers, they subscribe to a message from the message bus. Each subscriber is responsible for a topic and system combination. So for example, you have your you have your ERP and CRM subscribers which subscribe to orders and accounts. And then you have your CRM sub subscriber, which only subscribe, subscribes to the leads. We don't need the leads in the ERP system. Um, this is the place to handle business logic and concurrency issues. Depending on the data load, you can scale the subscribers. You have two options for Azure functions. You could either host them on a dedicated machine in an up service plan. There you can scale them vertically by just um, making the machine more performant. So going up a higher tier. Or you could just use multiple machines and scale it horizontally. The other option you have is you could 
hosted as a consumption-based plan. Here the cloud decides for you, based on your load, how many instances you need. The advantage is here is you only pay what you actually use. But disadvantage, for example, would be you have uh, a cold startup time. So if you're relying on speed, you have you would have to go with the app service plan. Let's go and see some benchmarks of systems we actually integrated so you can actually see that it works. We have two flagship projects here at Imakina CE where we use this kind of system integration. One is where we used lots of the Salesforce suite, we used Salesforce Service Cloud, we used the Sales Cloud, we used the Commerce Cloud for the web shop and the Marketing Cloud, as well as other systems like the BIM and TAM to manage products and digital assets. And we integrated all this with already existing client infrastructure like their ERP system. For the other project, we implemented a Microsoft Dynamics 365 service application, which builds the central workplace for one of the hugest service centers in Austria, so that this CRM can perform at its best and provide a full 360 degree view of for each service request. It's important that we integrate data from actually seven different, seven different subsystems and thus provide the ultimate service experience. So much for buzzwords. Let's take a look at the actual numbers. Surprisingly, the key figures are pretty similar for both projects. We have a typical round trip time of four to six seconds. So basically, if you order something in the web, in the web shop, it takes the longest six seconds till it arrives in the EUP system and can be processed. Um, typical load for our central systems, which are usually the CRMs, is 1 million API requests per hour. This can even go up at crunch times, for example, if you are doing an, in an initial load, to 4 or 5 million API requests per hour. Actually, I have a funny story to tell. Uh, last Christmas, our Microsoft CRM system um, was, act was acting really slow. We discovered that Microsoft actually throttled our API because they thought there was some kind of DDoS attack ongoing or there was some malfunction. Um, we then had to convince them that everything is okay and after a few calls with the main guys in San Francisco. They finally unthrottled the system again and marked our CRM instance as something special in their monitoring so that this won't happen again and our system will not be throttled again. Actually, they were quite surprised on what we could do with their system. And yeah, so I think we built something truly unique here. With that being said, I now want to finish my presentation with the awesome team that achieved that. I'm really proud of everyone in that team and what we accomplished together. System integration, done.